This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Let me, let me show you something. This is so important. Serving others is the very essence of ministry. You know, people always talk about want to be in ministry. Serving others is the very essence of ministry. You don't want to be in ministry if you're not, if you don't have the attitude of servanthood. If the only thing you're interested in is the paycheck, you, you're the first on your way to be last to be replaced by who was last. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We sing by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. There is a blessing when you go down the pathway of servanthood. There is a blessing when you go down the path of servanthood. For those that do this, they will be blessed. They will be happy. They will be prosperous. They will be blessed. God will bless you for doing them. Doing what? Serving. 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 Show me a man that's committed himself to serving the kingdom of God. And I'll show you a man who operates in the blessings of God and in the favor of God, and he is happy and he is prosperous. But there's just that a lot of, a lot of people who won't even receive that message. And I'm telling you, it's vital to serve. We'll, we'll get into the, de, the degree of this servanthood, but I just want to see, show you these promises that Jesus was saying. And I don't know about you, but if servanthood, by doing them, you are blessed. Man, I want to make sure that I am a servant all the time, all the time. And maybe there, there are some things you need to understand about your anointing and, and the things that you choose to do. So Jesus wants these disciples in this verse of Scripture, he wants them to remember that he served humankind and they should too. That he served humankind and they should too. There's a blessing in it. There's a blessing in it. They served, he served humankind, and they should too. Now, go to the book of Mark chapter 9, the book of Mark chapter 9, and verse 33 through 35. Mark 9, 33 through 35. Very interesting here. Uh, I'm going to bring up something that we're all familiar with, but I think now I know where it fits and what it means. Verse 33 says, And he came to Capernaum, and being in the house, he asked them, because he, he was asking the disciples. They had a little issue on the way uh, to Capernaum. Uh, they were trying to, they were talking amongst themselves, the disciples, well, who's the leader of the group? They said it like this, who's the greatest amongst us, Okay. And so Jesus was getting ready to ask this question, what were y'all talking about? Like he knew, but he wanted to see if, if they would bring it up. And he says, what was it that you disputed among yourselves by the way, on the way here to Capernaum? Verse 34, but they held their peace. In other words, they didn't say nothing. For by the way, they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest, who should be the greatest or who should be the leader of them, okay? And uh, verse 35, and so Jesus sat down and he called the 12 and he saith unto them, because he knew what they, you know, Jesus knows that stuff, all right? And verse, and he says, if any man desires to be first, uh, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. 
He says, now, it, you're talking about who's the greatest amongst you. You're talking about who's the leader. You're talking about who's the first. He says, all right, I'm going to answer your question. The first one is going to be the, the last of all because he's the servant of all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the whole body looks at you and they're all, well, you're just a servant. They, if they understood the power and the blessings of servanthood, they would never, ever, ever refer to it as just a servant. They, 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 there's a demeaning type of uh, connotation to how they say things about people. You're just a servant. And Jesus said, the guy that wants to be first, the guy that wants to be the greatest amongst you, the guy that wants to be the leader, let him be last and let him be a servant. See, God, God's got some wisdom here that'll blow your mind. Nobody's working to be last. Nobody even really desires to be a servant. People want to be seen and heard by folks. They want, they want to, again, to be up in front so they can kind of, you know, make, make, make it feel like, you know, that they're important. But there's a power and an anointing and a blessing in being the last and being the servant of all. Now, this is so, so very important. I, um, I go, to, go to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19. I, I'm debating on whether or not I want to do the whole bulk of this chapter because, you know, Jesus is trying to get people to understand servanthood. And uh, in, in studying this servanthood, I, I, I kind of reevaluated some things. Not that what you thought or what I thought about these scriptures were wrong, but I, I, I kind of reevaluated some of the things that I, I saw. And so in, I think I will. I think it'll be, be a blessing if I went through the whole thing. Um, well, let me just start off where I, where I want to be, and then, and then maybe I'll see if I go back there. Look at um, verse um, Matthew chapter 19, and let's look at verse 29 and 30. Matthew 19, 29 and 30. All right, now you're familiar with this. He says in verse 28, uh, let's start at verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you that you which have followed me in the regeneration of when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, shall also, uh, ye, sh ye also shall sit upon 12 thrones, judging the 12 uh, tribes of Israel. So he's saying to his disciples, he says, you guys are going to sit on the throne to judge Israel with God. That's pretty awesome. That's, pre that's pretty awesome. Amen. And he says in verse 29, and every one that hath forsaken houses, brethren, sister, father, mother, wife, children, lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Now, why'd that come up in there? Because I believe what he's talking about when he says forsaken all this stuff, I believe what he's talking about is are you willing to, to take yourself, to give up your rights to another and to devote to others' interests rather than your own. I, I believe that's what that was saying there. Are you willing to give up your rights to another and to devote to another's interest rather than your own? That's hard in today's society. Everybody is concerned about their own interests. And the Bible prophesies that was going to happen at the end of the day. Are you willing to, to, to separate yourself from your own interests? I'm telling you, not many people are. They, everybody's got a, a, a plan. Everybody's got their, their interests. And, and, and they don't understand the way to get your interests to manifest is to be devoted to somebody else's interests. And, and, and that's what servanthood, it, it used to be uh, apprenticeship was big. When I was coming up, it was just a privilege to work for free so you can see how this thing goes together. It was an honor to be able to do that. I remember as a student in my senior year, I had the privilege to, to coach 
in, in, in spring football. I had an opportunity to be around them to see what they were doing. And then finally, I got an opportunity to, to spend a couple of weeks doing it myself. It, it was awesome. It's like you feel confidence because, you know, I, I, I had to put away my interests and, and, and serve somebody else's interests, and then that puts me ahead. And I think that's what he's talking about, servanthood. He's like, because he brings this thing up again. He says, many that were, many that are first are going to be last. And I believe the ones that are first that are going to end up being last are those who decided to go down another pathway. You got there first, but it doesn't last long because you're being replaced with the person who was last. Oh, my God, I, I've seen that over and over again. I've seen someone that was in, in, in first place replaced with somebody in last place because there's something about this power of servanthood. Being in last place or being the servant is a guaranteed way to be in first place. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And some of you just need to live long enough so you can see this work out. It, it, it may, it, see, the thing about a servant is you have to have patience because this thing doesn't happen overnight. I know the guy who's our CEO right now, uh, Brother Vernon, served this ministry for 20 years or more, and he is now the CEO of this ministry. It didn't come overnight. But here's the thing about it. He served the ministry for 20 years, is the CEO of the ministry right now, and he's still serving. You can't stop him because you, you have to understand, it, 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 it didn't happen overnight, but it, it is an assured promotion that's working hour by hour, day by day, week by week, month by month. It's an assured thing, and it's something that when you arrive there, God uses all of those days and years and hours to have prepared you for being first. But a lot of people don't want to do that. They think that the Internet is here, so anybody can do something. Now, let's just get on the Internet and do da 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 You can, but you can only go so far because your character is your ceiling. And there are lots of things you neglect because you refuse to serve somebody. That's why I said a team of one will never be successful a long time. <laughs> you're going to have to stand on somebody's shoulders. You're going to have to, to serve somebody to really get a hold of, of what all that means. And so I believe that's what Jesus was talking about here. He's talking about, but many that are first shall be last. Think of that. Think about those who are the first, and then all of a sudden, the last is going to end up being the first. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Amen. Let me, let me show you something. This is so important. Serving others is the very essence of ministry. You know, people always talk about want to be in ministry. Serving others is the very essence of ministry. You don't want to be in ministry if you're not, if you don't have the attitude of servanthood. If the only thing you're interested in is the paycheck, you, you're the first on your way to be last to be replaced by who was last. I'm telling you, it just works that way. It's like circumstances come along and cause these things to happen. But here's one thing I do know. Serving others is the very essence of ministry. I mean, in my own life, I, I was, uh, I was, I mean, I, I served extremely. I was at a, a, a Baptist church, and I decided I'm, you know, I'm going to serve the kingdom of God. And I'm going to serve the kingdom of God with whatever abilities I have. And I knew how to clean up because I worked with my grandparents in the summertime. They had a cleaning business, and, and I, I knew how to do that. And so I went to work. I, I looked at the building, and I thought the building needed to be cleaned, and, and just some detailed things need to happen. And I started off, started off by cleaning all the bathrooms with a, with a toothbrush and some baking soda and got on my knees and would scrub screw up that tile and, and would shine everything up and, 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 and just whatever I had to do. I cut the grass. I, I did all kinds of things. I pulled carpet up from the cement. I, I, whatever I could do to serve, and I did it with joy. I did it with joy. I was the last. I was at the last, man, and sometimes I'd be in situations where I was the only person there to do those kind of things. And then something happened where the pastor had to go in to get a hunter operation. So there needed to be a pastor who would uh, take over at that time. And I was in the ministry at that time, serving. That's what it means. And uh, he called me in office one day. He says, I'm going to get an operation. 
and uh, I'd like for you to oversee the church while I'm gone. And I'm like, what? Me? Me? Why me? He says, because I can trust you. See, there's something about servanthood that, 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 that allows you to, to get, gain the attention of others to show you favor. And, and I knew, now this was a very interesting time because I knew, I knew how people were. They, they'll try to take you and put you in places where you don't belong. I knew I was standing in his stead. And so I asked him, I said, could I preach in your role? And I, I want to preach everything that you preach. I'm not up there trying to make my point because I'm standing in your stead. I am standing as a servant. I am serving you. This is a servant. Now that I have the robe on and preaching in the pulpit, I'm still a servant. I'm the servant. And I wanted to make sure that congregation knew I was the servant. And I served in that capacity to make sure that things were healthy and, and just the way he left it. I'm a servant. See, the attitude of the servant is so important, and you've got to understand this principle that serving others is the very essence of ministry. Now, let me say something that's very strong here. Your anointing is not for you, but it's for others. Your anointing is not for you, but it's for others. Look at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7 in the King James and then the NLT. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 7 talks about the gifts of the Spirit or these different anointings that would come. And he says, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man, what? To profit with all. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now look at this in the NLT. He talks about that a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. Well, you've got to understand that, that your anointing is not given to you. Every one of us have been given an anointing to do something. Every one of us, and this, this, this chapter happens to talk about it, has been given an anointing to do something. But with all of the anointings and the abilities that you have, the intent was never to be self-serving with that anointing. That anointing for helps, that anointing to sing, that anointing to preach, that anointing to serve, that anointing to administrate, that anointing. None of that anointing is to be monetized or used for your own self issues. It's supposed to be for somebody else. It's supposed to be, my anointing's not for me. My anointing is for, for, for somebody else. Right now, this anointing is not for me. This, this, my anointing to teach the gospel is for you. Your anointing to sing is for somebody else. That's the thing that's all been all messed up. A long time ago, the, the, the record companies used to go into church to try to find out what was going on in the church, and then they, they put them on vinyl records. Preaching used to be on vinyl records. You got to understand, what anointing do you carry, but you're not carrying to somebody else? You're just only carrying it for you. You figured out a way. The God gave it to you. You didn't gift yourself. You didn't anoint yourself. You didn't call yourself. You didn't equip yourself. God equipped every man so we can serve one another. He gave every person an anointing so we can serve one another. And we are now living in a generation and a time that that's the last thing on somebody's mind to serve somebody. I ain't serving nobody unless you're going to pay me. I ain't serving nobody unless you're going to do something for me. So you got to understand the path to what you're looking for comes through servanthood. But you won't serve. I know people who are, who are paid artists and do stuff. But man, when it comes to their church, they're there the whole time. I know a woman right now who was at the very beginning of Hillsong, got it really moving and rocking and rolling, man, and just, just did it because that was her anointing and service to God. And God promoted them to an, another level of servanthood and ministry. I'm telling you what I know. And I know there's some, oh, I don't want to hear that. Oh, this isn't the 60s. You know, this is the 2021. Don't nobody do that like that no more. So, you know, what you're saying is we, we, don't, we don't pay attention to the Word anymore that you got a new filter, you have a new philosophy, and you're viewing the world through your filter and through your worldly philosophies, and you have now deemed that this truth is no longer valid. And that's why you are where you are, tired, sweating, 
frustrated, suffering with emotional rejections because you're working hard to try to do it your way, and God has already given you access to that way. What a word this morning from Taffy. God's given you access to greatness, access to leadership, access to be the head. And you know what? You won't go down that road. You won't go down that path. Ain't never served nobody in your life. All you want is to be served. All you, and if that's you, if you're the kind of person that all you ever want is to be served, you are a person that I guarantee you, I don't know when, but you're going to end up being the last. You're going to end up being the last. Isn't it sad that you've seen great and awesome people, they were up front, they were number one in their game, and then you looked at, at the end of it, they, they were the last. They're the, they're the last now. You don't hear about them no more. You don't know what's going on with them no more. They're the last because they refuse to acknowledge this pathway of success, which is servanthood. Servanthood is the pathway of success. Amen? So your anointing is not for you. I, I constantly remind myself, my anointing is not for me. So I don't need to be getting around being sad and, oh, I'm so, I'm so tired and, oh, don't nobody love me and won't nobody acknowledge me and, and nobody won't give me, you know, you know it, validate me and, oh, this and that and, oh, they, they didn't choose me to get the award and, oh, they didn't recognize me. Are you kidding? That's baby talk. This anointing is to serve the kingdom of God. This anointing is to serve the gospel of God. This anointing is to serve the sick, the brokenhearted, the torment, the demon-possessed. And there's somebody in this earth that God has equipped with an anointing to remove the burden and destroy the yoke, but you won't use it. You're so busy beating yourself up because the pride of life has taken over and you're more concerned about being seen as important and you have an anointing to use for the kingdom, to use for the kingdom. Oh, my God, I want to meet Jesus as a servant, not as somebody that think he was all that. I want to see, I want to meet him as a servant. Halaboshaka. <laughs> that when I see Jesus, I bow down and, and I'm like, I'm your humble servant, Lord. And I want him to be able to, to, to grab me by the, the arms and, and, and pick me up from my knees because I know I'm going to fall out and say, my good and faithful, watch this, servant. He's expecting servants when that day time comes. My good and faithful servant, well done. You've been faithful of a few. Now I'm going to make you ruler over many. Look who gets that, the servant. And some people may leave the earth last, but when they get to heaven, they won't be last. And it's not just going to heaven in order to see that promotion. You can see it here now if we'll learn the power of, and the pathway of servanthood. Look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24. Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Uh, let's look at it in the King James first and then in the NLT. He says, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. You know how important that is? Whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Verse 24, he says, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Basically what he's saying, whatever you do, do it, do it as a service to him. Now, are you, are you going to be able to say that? Are, if you look at what you're doing, can you say this is a, serv a service to God or is it just a service to you? Look at Colossians 3, 23 and 24 in the NLT now. Let's serve others by serving Christ. Let's serve others by serving Christ. Look at he says. He says, work willingly at whatever you do. So, this is so important. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than people. So he says, work willingly as though you're working for the Lord rather than other people. Is achieving success a driving force in your life? Lots of people want to be the boss, but most don't know how. In his revealing series, Servanthood, The Pathway to Success, Creflo Dollar examines Jesus' example and uncovers the secret to real success that lasts. This series can change the entire course of your life. 
Get the four message series plus the study notes today for a love gift of just 35 US dollars or more, plus shipping and handling. Jesus Christ, the greatest servant of all time, also the greatest leader of all times. They go hand in hand. Let's serve others by serving Christ. Show me a man that's committed itself to serving the kingdom of God, and I'll show you a man who operates in the blessings of God and in the favor of God, and he is happy and he is prosperous. Don't miss out. Call the number on your screen or go to creflodollarministries.org and click eStore to get the combo today. Men, it's our time to dive deeper at the 2021 Mentality Men's Conference. Join us online on September 10th and 11th for two days of dynamic teachings from Creflo Dollar, raw and uncut. You're trying to live by a code that's no better than trying to live by the Abrahamic law. It's going to require you trusting in what you can do more than trusting in God. You can trade in the man code and you can take hold of this gospel of grace and you can live by the finished works of Jesus Christ. Don't miss out on this revival of manhood at the 2021 Mentality Conference. We got to give you the word of God. You got to learn some stuff. Wake yourself up and get this on the inside of you. You cannot live without Christ. You're about to receive real resolution in your life. So mark your calendars and register today. Simply text MENTALITY to 51555 or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. I want to extend a special thanks to those of you out there who are committed to giving into our international efforts. Those of you who sow precious seeds into this ministry, help us with our global missions all over this world. This year, we've partnered with organizations all over the world to help rescue human trafficking victims, build irrigation systems, and support orphanages, schools, and homes for the elderly. Meeting the physical and spiritual needs of hurting people opens the door to share the gospel of grace with them. Thank you for helping us minister to people everywhere. And may God bless you. Log on to our website at missions.creflodollarministries.org to see all the work we do at Creflo Dollar Global Missions. Thank you for your support. Are you searching for direction or just need a word from God? Join the World Changers Nation for service every Sunday at 10 a.m. or restream at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Together, we're understanding grace and empowering change. Text WATCH NOW to 51555 or visit worldchangers.org for more information about our services and streaming times. We're in this together. No matter where we are, we are World Changers. See you online. Join us online as we bring you praise and worship from the World Changers Church family and the Word of God from pastors Creflo Dollar and Taffy Dollar. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.